Hi, I'm George Cow, and I'm here with Amparo. She's been one of my clients, and she's going to be sharing some business lessons with you today. And I'm excited to have her have her share. Hi, Amparo. Good to be here. Hi. With you. Thank you so Thanks much, George. It's good to be here. Thank you. So let me uh, read your bio out to the audience so that everyone can have a sense of your background, and then we'll go into your business lessons, and um, and we'll go from there. So. Um, so uh, let me get the bio up here. Amparo is a business coach and consultant for the spiritual entrepreneur trying to reach a multicultural audience with a penchant for mixing the ethereal with the practical. She supports small business owners in creating compassionate businesses that treat their clients, their teammates, and themselves as what they really are, multidimensional beings on a lifelong adventure to bring more joy and awareness to communities across the world. I love that, Amparo. Thank you for uh, thank you. embodying that. So, um, I mean, as a business coach, I think everything you're going to say today is going to be helpful for my audience. But um, just in terms of building your own business, your own journey, uh, there's a couple of things that you know you you, you sent to me in preparation for this that you know that we should talk about. And one of them, I think, is especially appropriate especially relevant uh, now and during the winter times and just kind of where the world is at these days but yeah. uh, talk talk about how, you know the experience of depression and how that relates to purpose and just your your, your business journey anything you want to share there yeah absolutely so um, my process of, of stepping towards this transition of walking from sort of the standard working for someone to creating my own business around my purpose, it coincided directly with a cycle of depression. And it was a very, very, very tough depression. Like uh, I had just never been that low before. And in pulling myself out of it, what I came to, to understand about my own journey was that the reason why I had sunk so deeply into depression, it was it was one of the main reasons why I had sunk so deeply into depression was because I had walked away from what I deeply felt was what, what was my purpose. And it was something that I was sort of semi conscious of as I was <laughs> sort of navigating life and thinking that I had to walk away from it in order to be prepared for it. Something that I felt like I had to do, but I sort of, lost my way along the way and I went sort of a little too too in that direction and I ended up sinking into really deep depression and I found myself so deeply depressed that I literally couldn't leave my house I I would lay in bed for hours literally unable to leave and that's something that depression is still very highly stigmatized mental health in general is so highly stigmatized we don't really talk about this stuff right and we make so light of it we dismiss it so much but it's such it's such a real thing and it's so important to be okay and accept that sometimes you literally cannot get out of bed literally cannot and in that moment you have to be okay with doing whatever you can do Sorry for the background noise I mentioned. I mentioned before we started recording that I live in New York and so it's just noisy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're not on the ground floor, you're like way up. It's like the sounds of the city. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always all the time. It's noisy yeah. escape. No worries um, at all. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I hit a moment where I realized that I had a choice to make and I could either choose to continue to let myself go deeper into the darkness or to try to gradually pull myself up. And I chose to gradually pull myself up. And I didn't have resources to try to go to find a, um, a program that could support me. So I had to pull myself up from the deepest depression I had ever been in my entire life. And there are some very important lessons that come from, from doing that. You can't do it fast. You can't. You have to do it gradually. You have to be very self-compassionate. You have to celebrate all your successes, even if that success is, I got out of bed to go get a glass of water. You have to celebrate every success, right? So I went through this process. It took me, I would say, about a year before I started feeling like I was making enough progress. So I was starting to see glimpses of who I used to be, um, like significant glimpses, right? More than just a moment here, a moment there. And as I was 
pulling myself out of this depression, I started walking back towards what I felt had been my deeply held purpose that I've felt very strongly was it for a decade or more. And I wasn't, one in my mind wasn't intentionally connected to the other. I wasn't walking out of depression in order to get back to my purpose, though I knew at the time that a part of me knew at the time that the reason why I was depressed was because I wasn't living in my purpose. I wasn't anywhere within the vicinity of my purpose. I knew that. Uh, but it just so happened to take that route that as I started to feel better, as I started to have uh, longer moments of feeling okay and of feeling optimistic and of feeling like myself again, I started to, um, I started to live. Um, I started to live that purpose, even though I wasn't channeling it out into the world, right? I was being in that energetic space of who that person is, who that person has to be in order to be purpose filled in that moment, purpose led in that moment. And it was a very important life altering realization for me uh, because there's no, there's no going back after you've experienced something like that there's still a gradual process, right? I'm still taking it relatively, I'm not on the fast track at this point yet. And it's very intentional because I know that I have to be very kind and gentle with myself still. And I'm okay with that. But that, that experience taught me so much about how intimately connected mental health is with feeling like you're being purposeful. Like your life has meaning like your life has purpose, like the things that are innate to you, the things that you are naturally talented in are being utilized by you, for you, for the people that you feel so intimately connected with to serve, right? Like all those things are so super important and it's very deeply ingrained in me now <laughs> and it always was, but I know it more now because of what I've lived. It's, it's part of my DNA now because of what I've lived wow. and it's and it's it's like I've taken a painting and I've added more strokes of different colors to it mm. so I see it I see it it looks like a very different painting than what I started off with a decade ago that's beautiful so that was number one yeah that's really <laughs> great and then and then I mean you mentioned this but uh compassion talk about that part of it yeah, so compassion what was what got me out of depression. One, if I were to boil it down to one ingredient, it would be lived compassion and, and channeling that, that back to me. And compassion in action, again, literally. <laughs> I don't use that word a lot, but I mean it literally. At the beginning meant watching videos of baby animals and lip syncing because that brought me joy in the moment. And that evolved, right? So that evolved so that compassion in action meant listening to your videos, for example. So over time it evolved and over time it, it looked more like from the outside looking in, oh, this, purpose, this person is, um, she's acting in what her natural talents are, but it's always compassion in action. And what I wrote to you was that, um, uh, compassion cyclone, the, the power of, of, of compassion uh, to really transform anything, including a business, including the people that you serve. And that's why it impacts the business, right? And, and, and let me clarify, when I say the people that you serve, I don't just mean your clients, I mean your teammates, I mean yourself, I mean the people that are looking to you and maybe not necessarily taking action, but they're being inspired by you. You serve every single person that you come in contact with period. And so when you keep that in mind and when you when you start to test out what compassion and action looks like for you and you start to expand that to to first of all take it unconditional, right? What does unconditional compassion and action mean? It's like huge important questions. But you apply it to the people that you serve, it changes the relationship because it goes from what can that person do for me? to what can we do together? What can just being present in this moment and allowing all of who we are to be present in this moment, what can that do for this relationship? 
And what does that person really need that I can provide or that um, either by action or inaction? And what I've seen in entertaining those questions and, and the answers differ by person and they differ by moment, right? But what I've found by entertaining those questions is just, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't, I, I mean this with so much seriousness, it is mind blowing. And I mean that so strongly because I think that, um, first of all, one of the reasons why I really was attracted to what you have to share is because it's not, it's, it's, it resonates naturally with me, but it's not found everywhere, right? These ideas of, of authentic uh, connection with your clients and thinking of them first. But I believe they're so important and so powerful and they change a business where it's unrecognizable at the end after these principles have been applied to it. And the quality of your relationships with each of these people is just dramatically different. There's a huge difference in quality between a relationship that is superficial or that is, um, that is lack based or scarcity based or that is, or that is even need based quite honestly versus one that is forward thinking and trans transformation focused and compassion focused. So yeah, I, mm. I am a huge yeah. advocate for all of that. And one of the things uh, it, that you, you mentioned in your notes is about this, you know, when we approach a client, when we have a client meeting or a teammate um, or, or, you know, maybe, maybe our partner, but, uh, and we, we, we have to take this attitude of what have you done for me or why haven't you already done that? Um, which is very common, uh, especially yeah. if, uh, if there was a previous agreement or an expectation so, so talk us through that. What's, how do you bring compassion or how can we transition or transform that? Yeah, it's a good question. So again, it's, it's very specific to each relationship and it evolves over time and it involves a lot of honest, open conversations, which you don't typically see in business, but I think are so important. And again, they transform the business when you do, right? Because there's so much, oh my goodness, in every relationship, people tend to hide so much, right? And so let's take a romantic relationship. Everyone has to some level experience a romantic relationship, right? I would say that it's almost a universal principle, at least in the Western circles that I've been a part of, that when you keep something hidden in romantic relationships, it's not typically good for that relationship, right? And I would say that the same thing is true with regards to professional relationships, especially when you're working with someone as part of your team. So that's one, is that it involves a commitment to more openness, but also being okay with the discomfort that will come from that to begin with, right? Because anytime that you open up something that's hidden, there is, tends to be at least surprise, if not a range of other emotions. <laughs> and then and then, and then commitment to, to the process. So realizing that um, sort of seeing the impact that commitment to these principles has in other areas of your life sparks curiosity and commitment to test out commitment to these principles in this area of your life that is uncharted. And that commitment itself then uh, inspires the, the conversations and the actions. So yeah. that's the other thing. And then um, <laughs> the, the third thing that I would say is, um, and I know this sounds sort of off topic, but absolutely not, is a commitment to silliness and a commitment to lightheartedness. Because in, a, uh, in an environment that is more joyful and loving, again, loving is not a word you usually hear in business, but loving and caring, that relationship automatically opens up to those new channels of of open honest conversation and and vulnerability uh and once you start to experience that and you start to see that other person as a multi-dimensional person with their own needs then uh for most people i would say that uh I would say that the natural result from that is increased compassion. 
and it again it differs by person it differs by relationship yeah. and uh uh yeah so it's case by case but commitment to ideals is what i what i generally um adhere to and there are uh, a couple of principles that you outlined um that i thought was interesting about for example knowing that every voice has a purpose yes uh knowing that every stumble has a purpose but talk us through a, little, a few of these principles i think these are interesting yeah yeah so um sort of connecting the the two ideas uh i'm i'm so of the mindset that life is like this big 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 playground of play-doh and whatever hand grabs that play-doh is going to make something completely different right but if you stick to general concepts general ideas then those those formations may look different, but they'll still be within the same general world, right? So uh, there were five principles that um, I laid out in my email. You, you touched upon two of them. So when I mean that every voice has a purpose, what I'm talking about is, and, and every, sorry, every, knowing every voice has a purpose is not the most you know, mind blowing idea. A lot of people say it, but what I mean by that is going a little bit deeper, which is to say that every voice within ourselves has a purpose because we're always sort of experiencing a conflict between all of these different ideas and opinions and voices. And we tend to hush some voices and listen to others, right? And sort of label this one good or bad and then put it away. But what my depression taught me is that that voice that may feel too harsh in that moment, it carries a very important, at least one lesson for you. So it has a purpose. And it has a purpose that I may not reveal to you in that moment. It may reveal to you later. But to reject something, to dismiss it, if it's internal to you or outside of you, you sort of delay the the understanding what that purpose is. So that's what I meant, that every voice internal to us has a purpose. Uh, the second one that you mentioned was knowing that every stumble has a purpose. So something else on my depression really drilled into me. This is something that I had conceptualized beforehand, but really had to learn, really had to experience that stuckness and things that are related to that, right? Doubt and, and other emotions that people really don't like to experience. They're not just there. They're, they're, they're also filled with meaning and with purpose that starts to reveal itself to you when you accept it, when you welcome it, when you befriend it. And it takes time, right? I'm not saying you're feeling depressed, you're feeling angry, you're feeling anxious. Okay, you know what, what are you doing? running away from this emotion, sit down and become friends with it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying over time, over time, trying to change your relationship to it so that it's heavy and it's, and it's painful, but that's all it is, right? In that moment, it's heavy and it's painful, but recognizing that it is its own mosaic as well, that over time it may reveal a little more of that mosaic to you, a little more, a little more, a little more. And for all you know, the reason why you're going through that depression, the reason why you're experiencing that stuckness, the reason why you're experiencing that doubt is because in 10 years, you're going to find a cure for it for another group of people. The reason why you experience this illness, the reason why you experienced X, Y, and Z, poverty, um, harassment, all these really heavy things that people have been dealing with for eons, right? But it feels so concentrated and mucky and dark right now. I very much believe that there is a very important purpose that is to some degree uh, revealing itself little by little. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with the spreading of the opposite of it, the spreading of the joy and the spreading of compassion and the spreading of of the positivity of community and it, it comes from the mosaic of the purpose of that thing so yeah beautiful wow 
Well, I think this is a, a amazingly this you know we, we've we've covered a lot, and the time <laughs> is is you know for this conversation has come to an end. But thank you, thank you for um, sharing so openly about your journey. I think I think this will be encouraging to a lot of us. Um, you know, I think we all go through you know the valleys sometimes. And of course, some of us uh, have 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 much you know, more, more serious levels of uh, depression or uh, you know sort of chapters of, of of darkness. And I I hope this video will encourage people that there is always a light uh, at the end of the tunnel, and there's um, there's a greater purpose to all the experiences that we have. And compassion is the way there. You know, so thank you, thank you. Um, how can people uh, get a hold of you? Oh, actually, we, I, I should mention uh, a little bit about what you are offering uh, folks at this time. So you do uh, business coaching. You have you also do customized programs depending on the client's needs. You have three month programs, twelve month programs. Um, but anything Six else months. you want to say? Yeah. And in fact, um, you even have you even have a, a special um, offer actually for those yes. who are watching this. So I'd love for you to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so as you were saying, I have I have uh, three month programs, I have six month programs, and I have twelve month programs. But it depends on the client's needs, right? It depends on where they are in their business and what it is that they really want to get out of the next three months, six months, twelve months for themselves and for their clients. And uh, the, the special offer that I wanted to offer to um, anyone who is watching or listening is that um, if you send me an email to ambaro at upliftinginfinity.org or .com, I'll have to send it to you so you can put the right word. Dot, dot com is what I see here. Uh, yes, dot the, com. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so ambaro at upliftinginfinity.com um, and you put in the subject line, everyone is sacred then you'll get 30% off of any package that I offer. That is amazing. That is so generous. Thank you so much. And I love the, you know, the, the name of your website, Uplifting Infinity. I think that yeah. gives people a flavor of the energy that you bring to your work. Um, and just so people know, Amparo is spelled A-M-P-A-R-O. So <laughs> A-M-P-A-R-O at upliftinginfinity.com. Put in the subject line, everyone is sacred, and you will be able to get um, Amparo's current packages at 30% off. Uh, I should mention that's probably for a limited time. I don't know if people might be watching those years and years into the future. So, uh, you know, sort of do it closer to when this video was published, you know, early 2019, then you'll be more, uh, you'll be able to access the, the, the special offer. So thank you Amparo for your work and your, um, well, the compassion that you bring to your clients and your audience. Thank you so much. Thank you.